Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance. In this presentation, we're going to be covering uh, how to create a power profile for athletes. And then once we've done this power profile, how can we then use the results to actually individualize and optimize um, our training prescription um, so that we can enhance athletic performance maximally um, based on the strengths and weaknesses of the athlete. So firstly, we need to understand what a power profile is. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to assess uh, performance across a range of uh, force velocity, forces and velocities. So basically across this entire force velocity curve. So to understand what the force velocity curve means and how different qualities can actually um, lie on different places on the force velocity curve, you can see the video on this channel, The Essentials of Training for Power. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to um, do this power profile and then compare the results to basically an elite population. So the, uh, the norms of the elite population. So we actually can understand where the individual athlete is um, has their strengths and their weaknesses. So we know what to work on. So um, how do we actually assess these qualities based basically along this force velocity curve? So essentially what we need to do is use similar, basically a similar exercise, but basically vary the load so that we have um, exercises that are higher on the force end and lower on the velocity end, and then exercises that are higher on the velocity end and lower on the force end, and then everything in between. So the easiest and probably only real accurate way to do this is through vertical jumping. So what we can do is we can basically do a 1RM back squat or some sort of 3RM or some sort of heavy back squat test. Then we can do squat jumps at something like 30% of the 1RM of our back squat. Then we do like a squat jump with no weight, followed by counter movement jump and then a drop jump. So basically what's going to happen is the velocity of each exercise is going to increase, um, but the force will decrease. So this will be maximum force and this will be the least um, force oriented exercise. So once we do that, we need to then record the results and actually compare them to elite performers. So the elite performers that we're going to compare the results to can either be basically collected from the team or past teams or if, um, basically the team in charge. So the strength and conditioning team in charge has normative data over a few years that they've collected. They can compare to those averages of the elite populations. So we know where our athletes roughly need to be to perform at the elite level or the desired level. Or norms can be collected from research papers or other sort of publications. So essentially, let's look at this example here. This is this blue marker is the elite average. Um, so let's say we got those norms and this is basically where the elite performers are. And then athlete A, we tested them. We did a power profile with those exercises and we're going to um, compare and see where they are and how they compare to the elite average. So let's have a look at the, firstly start here on the 1RM back squat, so the most uh, force oriented. They're above average, so their results are actually above average. So they're stronger than average in um, the strength exercises. Then a squat jump at 30% of the 1RM, they're still above average in that. Squat jump unweighted, they're basically average counter movement jump they're slightly below average and then when we start doing uh getting to getting into reactive strength so a drop jump reactive strength index is less than that of the elite average so as we can see basically from this example of an athlete they are much more force oriented so their um their back squat numbers and their squat jump um abilities are a lot higher than average but then when we start getting into the higher velocity exercises they are lower than average so what we can conclude from um, basically um, testing doing a power profile test with this athlete is that they probably need more um, reactive strength training and more velocity type training um, so basically following on to um, basically summarize the results or what the results actually mean. As we can see from that athlete, they were lacking 
much more in the velocity side of things, but they were above average in the force side of things. So that means the training programs that they should basically um, be doing for the next uh, next focus should be m much more velocity based and less on the uh, strength based. So whatever the lagging quality is, that's what we want to emphasize. And before we finish this presentation, we've got to talk about some of the limitations of the power profile. So the first limitation is that we, may, we might not be able to test specific movements. So if we are doing that vertical jump power profile, it may not be exactly um, related to performance of something that doesn't have a lot of vertical jumping in it. So maybe our sport is... Um, uh, maybe our sport is baseball. So does vertical jumping really have that much of an um, an effect on baseball? And can that really determine the difference between elite performers? So that's a limitation there. It's also quite time costly. We need to do uh, five or six exercises in order to get a good power profile. Uh, the group comparisons we use are going to be um, somewhat hard to get data on if we don't have um, a group group data already and it's going to be quite hard to find from the research and also lastly and a big one is that there's expensive equipment required so we need a force platform to do some of these tests which is going to be quite um, expensive and if you if the facility doesn't have those um, if it doesn't have that equipment then it's going to be very difficult to do a power profile that's it for this presentation, guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of it. So you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram with the details here. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date with the latest informative videos that are posted. Also, if you're a curious individual that's uh, interested in learning more about sports performance training, you can check out uh, Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram and you'll find these research infographics which are essentially the latest research in sports performance training so that you can stay up to date with the, uh, with the latest research and they're summarized into these easy to understand infographics. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully you got something out of it.